with this um, uh, concept of the Rouliad, which is a this is okay deep rabbit hole. I mean, this is a this is a um, uh, you know the question is you know if you believe that the universe is kind of a computational thing. There are these rules that are running. They're generating everything. That includes, you know, us sitting here right. yakking about stuff and so on. And then you say, well, why did the universe get these rules and not other rules? Mm -hmm. And then you start realizing, well, maybe actually the universe has all possible rules, but we are merely observing some slice of it. Just like we are at a particular place in physical space, you know, at this, right. you know, some corner of some galaxy and so on. Similarly, we are at some corner of this kind of way that we are perceiving how the universe works and what rules it's using. So this sort of the ultimate object that emerges from this is this thing we call the Rouliad, which is the entangled limit of all possible computations. So imagine if you're sort of in the computer science, and I should have mentioned theoretical computer science when I was talking about computer science and kind of dissing it as, a, <laughs> as an area because, you know, uh, co theoretical computer science is great and it has m lots of mileage. It's not what people mostly learn about when they and, and people who actually want to be, you know, production IT programmers or software engineers, you know, knowing the theory of Turing machines is really not that not that relevant. It's a great field, however. Um, but uh, the uh, you know thought about in terms of those things, the really had one sort of instantiation of it would be you take all possible Turing machines with all possible rules, all possible inertial conditions, you run them. It's kind of an entangled thing because two different Turing machines can end up producing the same state. Mm. And so it's not the case that you just get all this definite, definite threads of what can happen. So it's kind of, that, that's the, um, uh, so anyway, this, this really odd object, it's very philosophically interesting object because it's kind of a, a necessary has to exist object because it is just a formal thing like two plus two equals four. Mm. Once you've defined the terms, you have no choice about the fact that two plus two equals four. So you have no choice about the fact that the really odd sort of is what it is, so to speak. And um, we're, we're kind of, our experience is sort of based on these slices that we take mm -hmm. of this, of this, of the Rouliad. And what we realize is that, that in a sense, the Rouliad is the bland everything, everything. It is, but our slice has all the stuff that is, you know, our laws of physics, our, uh, actually certain aspects of laws of physics are quite universal, but, but our kind of particular experience and, and mm. perception of the world, so to speak. And what you realize, so here's, here's one of the kind of um, uh, shocking sort of philosophical, almost theological things to realize, is that in a sense, the growth of knowledge is a growth of our extent in rural space. Mm. That is, at some point, we think the world works in this very specific way. Then we learn more about how to think about how things can work, and we're kind of extending this kind of... Um, domain in royal space that we exist in. But now you say, well, what's the limit of that? What's the, what's, what does the future hold? Well, we could imagine expanding our domain of, of, uh, of understanding to the whole Ruliad. The problem is then there is no coherent us anymore mm. because in a sense, the, the us, the thread of sort of, uh, you know, we are at this definite place in the Ruliad. We are, we are who we are. We are, you know, we are, we're localized in some sense in, in real space, just as we're localized in physical space. Um, all of that goes away by the time we sort of have, have colonized the whole of real space. Mm. And so in a sense, it's a kind of be careful what you wish for, because in the end, and it, it has a certain resonance actually with some, I, I don't know enough about it, but with some things that people have concluded in sort of uh, various kinds of, uh, of, uh, of sort of theological traditions and things like that. Once you, you know, by the time you get to the point where you understand everything, you kind of, and, and sort of encompass everything, you no longer coherently exist. And so this is a, you know, which is to say that the specialness of humans and the human history and all this kind of thing is something that is kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, that, that's what makes it all make sense, so to speak. Without that, it is all generic and that, um, uh, that, that makes it, um, um, it, it's, you know, and I think people kind of imagine that with science, we have something that just genericizes, you know, it, it, it allows us to just figure out what to do in some purely theoretical, we can prove it's correct kind of way. And uh, uh, I think, you know, computational irreducibility and a bunch of things that, that have come out of NKS, um, new kind of science, have, um, 
you know, kind of show one. And it wasn't where I thought it was going at all, by mm. the way. So that's a, a thing that sort 